have the latest out of West Texas after reports of a shooting at a Home Depot. Five people are dead and several others are injured. And from sandbags to evacuations, we have Dorian preparations out of Florida as the hurricane makes its way east. Plus, the I-20 robbery kicked off today and something's a little different at Malone Stadium. As tailgaters await the first game, we'll explain what's so different. Hello and thank you for joining me tonight. I'm Chelsea Jones. Police confirmed yet another mass shooting in West Texas. At least five people are dead and at least 20 others are injured. Victoria Larned has more. Control, but many people I've spoken with say they're devastated by what has happened here. Now law enforcement is trying to figure out the motive behind what was a routine traffic stop, how it turned into a man shooting a DPS officer, then going on a shooting spree. Odessa police say after the gunman shot the DPS trooper around 3.30 this afternoon, he took off, continuing to shoot randomly as he drove along the road. Shortly after, police say he ditched his car and hijacked a U.S. Postal Service truck. The Midland mayor says the shooting ended with a shootout in the Synergy Theater parking lot. He was gunned down by officers. They believe he was about 30 years old. Police believe originally there was a second shooter, but they just have determined that that is not the case. 13 victims were taken to the medical center in Odessa, and that infant was flown to University Medical Center in Lubbock. We spoke to a woman who was working nearby and says she's still trying to understand why this happened. It's devastating because it's like, it's just, you know, like I'm coming to work not thinking like nobody's going to get hurt, you know what I mean? And I'm thankfully that we didn't, no, nobody got hurt here. And, you know, it's just, I feel, my heart feels heavy for the people that are experiencing that because they're going out to the movies with their family. And then to he see all that, like I've seen the videos of kids crying on the floor, on the desert floor, because there's somebody crazy out there, like just shooting up the, like, the place. We're told the DPS trooper is in serious but stable condition, and those other two officers are stable as of now. Governor, Texas Governor Greg Abbott says he will be flying out tomorrow to provide additional support and survey the situation. For now, reporting from Midland, I'm Tori Larned. Switching gears a bit, as Hurricane Dorian continues to gain strength and move inland, Floridians are preparing for the worst. Ryan Hughes is there with a look into some of the preparations. Good evening. This is one of four sandbag locations open in Brevard County, Florida. Some residents tell me they have waited in their vehicles two, even four hours to pick up ten sandbags. One of the most coveted things along Florida's Atlantic coast this holiday weekend, sandbags. Cars and trucks stretch for as long as the eye could see. How long did you wait? For about two hours. What was it like? It's hot. It ain't a real flow, but it's worth it. Melbourne resident Willie Williams plans to put the sandbags next to his front door. This county, which has around 600,000 residents, has been on pins and needles as Hurricane Dorian churns its sea. A mandatory evacuation is set for Sunday at 8 in the morning for anyone living on the barrier island or in low-lying areas. I am leaving right now, actually. Where are you going to go? Um, either over to Tampa or back home to Maryland. We just moved here, like this week, from Tampa, so. <laughs> so we might be going back to Tampa. And these sandbag locations are open from sunup to sundown. Reporting in Melbourne, Florida, I'm Ryan Hughes. Now back to you. After several families lost their loved ones due to gun violence, a group of demonstrators came together outside the Morehouse Parish Courthouse to demand justice. This afternoon, family members and friends of DeMontrell Lolly and Thomas Johnson showed up with No Justice, No Peace t-shirts and signs in remembrance of the two young men. The group walked up and down the streets of Bastrop trying to get attention from local government and law enforcement with hopes that their loved one cases will be solved. Well, the Warhawks are taking on, or they took on Grambling State. I'm not sure of the score just yet. Spencer will have that. But tailgating has been the highlight for so many fans. But this year, it's a little different. And NBC 10's Anna McAllister explains why. Just beyond this fence, the game of the year will kick off for the ULM Warhawks and the Grambling State Tigers. For years, this very spot, the Grove, has been the location for hundreds of fans to unite and celebrate the glorious sport that is college football. 
Now, all it is is a mound of dirt. We've had to move, and it's, it's, it's a whole new tailgating spot. It's learning. This is obviously the first game with the whole new setup and whatnot. So nobody really knows if it's going to be good or bad. Now a husband and father, Harley Sieno is a ULM alum and former Warhawk tight end. For Sieno and his family, football is a part of life. In fact, his family has tailgated in the Grove for nearly a decade. But the new construction for ULM's medical school has pushed the Sienos and other fans out. There was a lot of trees where we were at. And obviously out here now, there's, there's not a lot of trees in shade. Uh, so that's obviously one concern people do have. The blistering heat taking on another meaning for a loyal fan and barbecue connoisseur Norman Amos just a few yards away. Like the Sienos, Amos has been tailgating these football games for years, but he doesn't seem to mind the change in location. Well, I understand that you know, progress has to be made and you know, changes have to be made, and we just have to adjust. Uh, that's for the benefit of the university. For the university, we're willing to move and do what we need to do. It's the end of a tradition for diehard fans who are used to camping out in the Grove. But despite the change in location, the team spirit remains the same. ULM, Gremlin, go out and give your best. Let's go. It's simple, right? There ain't nothing else to say. Reporting in Monroe, Anna McAllister, NBC10, your local news leader. ULM's new medical facility is scheduled to open sometime next year. Brian, what's this weather looking like? Hi, as we go into the upcoming holiday weekend, you may definitely need to keep that ice creamer handy as we go through the course of that weekend. I'll tell you how long the heat sticks around, when we'll see cooling, and we'll talk about the tropics when NBC10 News at 10 continues. For something old or something new, Cottonport Antique Mall. In the Arklamas, where you get your local morning forecast can be crucial. That's why it pays to tune to NBC10 News Today with meteorologist Lexi Birmingham and the power of live storm tracker Doppler radar. Then, for weather coverage across the nation and around the globe, join me for the Today Show right here on NBC10. News, weather, and sports. Follow us on the KTVE NBC10 KARD Fox 14 Facebook page. Here's your Buick, sir. Actually, that's my Buick. How are we going to fit in your mom's Buick? Easy. I like that new Buick. Me too. I was actually talking about that Buick. I knew that. Did you? Buick's fresh new lineup is full of surprises. Get this low mileage lease on this 2019 Buick Encore for around $199 per month. Or get over $4,200 below MSRP on this 2019 Buick Encore Preferred. See your Monroe area Buick dealer. When I took office, Louisiana was facing a $2 billion deficit that was crippling our state. But by bringing both parties together, we turned that deficit into a surplus. Now, more working people have health care than ever before. Our teachers received their first pay raise in a decade. We increased funding from preschool to college. And we're making the largest infrastructure investment in 30 years. My opponents want to take us back to where we were four years ago. But we've come too far to turn back now. I'm looking at that truck. Wow. That's awesome. This Labor Day, everyone's excited about Chevrolet. Oh, wow. They're all really cool cars. Ooh, I love it. I can't stop staring at it. Ride out the summer in a new Chevrolet this Labor Day. It's time to upgrade. Get 0% financing for 72 months plus $2,000 on all 2019 Silverado Double Cab pickups. And during the Labor Day sales event, make no monthly payments for 90 days. See your Super Chevy dealer today. 10 News at 10 continues. A newly released 911 call is sparking outrage after an Arkansas dispatcher is heard scolding a woman as rising floodwaters began to overtake her SUV and she desperately pleads for help. NBC's Blaine Alexander has the details and a warning what you may hear can be disturbing. When Debbie Stevens' car was being swept away by Arkansas floodwaters, she did the only thing she could. She called 911. Oh, God, please help me. Oh, please help me. I don't want to die. Operator Donna Renault can be heard trying to help. But don't come up to me, man, man. I want to get somebody out there to you. Just hold on. But about 10 minutes into the 24 minute call, Renault, who had recently submitted her resignation and was working her last shift, appeared to lose patience. I'm scared. I've never had anything like this happen to me before. Well, this will, this will teach you next time don't drive in the water. Couldn't see it, ma'am. I'm sorry. I wouldn't do. I don't see how you didn't see it. You had to go right over it. Nine minutes later, telling Stevens. 
Miss Debbie, you're going to have to shut up, okay? I need oh, you to listen, listen to me. Renault did not respond to NBC's request for comment. Fort Smith police say the call, while concerning, was not criminal. It's a tragic thing. I understand that. Are there things that we need to maybe look at in our response? Absolutely. They need to get their boat out here quick. She's way back there. It took officers nearly an hour to reach her. Stevens was driving her newspaper delivery route, her SUV hidden in the dark behind a row of trees. See where that light's reflecting? That's where she's at. By the time they pulled her out, the 47-year-old could not be revived. It was NBC's Blaine Alexander reporting such a heartbreaking story. But we have a full look at your forecast coming up next.